Good afternoon, everyone. Vincent Biatore here. I know I have discussed Asi Argento, Anthony Bourdain, and the Me Too movement kind of on my previous video on my primary channel. But I wanted to take the time to kind of discuss it further. Um, the whole thing really bothers me. So for those of you guys that don't know the details here, okay, Asi Argento was one of the architects, if you will, of the Me Too movement and the charges brought forth to uh, Henry Weinstein, you know, the guy, the big movie producer. So she obviously said that she had sex with him on different occasions and felt pressured because of his power, because of his position in Hollywood and in the movie industry. She felt like she couldn't say no. Or she felt like she was taken advantage of. So a lot of starlets, a lot of people came forward. I think it like dozens of women. Of, of course, only a few are actually testifying in court. I think the trial's still underway. But obviously this guy, it's not looking good in the court of public opinion. This guy's going to be, you know, for a long time, he's going to be behind bars. Anyway. The follow-up here is she was dating Anthony Bourdain, the famous chef, a TV personality who travels the world and kind of, you know, tries weird foods. Kind of cool guy. Had a different approach to it. Like he smoked cigarettes, drank wine, didn't care. Had a kind of cool kid vibe to him, you know. Uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was just different, right? And uh, anyhow, he recently committed suicide, right? He, I think he is a recovering addict. He's had a troubled life. Obviously, drinks, smokes, whatever. But we're not here to speculate on that. The fact is, a few days before he committed suicide, Asier Cento was caught making out with this guy by paparazzi in Italy. And in, in Italy, guarda, paparazzi are everywhere. They track your movements. He can't do nothing. And so this was pretty explicit photos. And a few days later, he committed suicide. Now, I'm not here really to speculate on why he committed suicide, but let's be honest. I guess maybe I am speculating. She had... It's common knowledge that, obviously, he was very, very much in love with her. She's much younger than he was. So I don't think it's far-fetched to say that, obviously, there was something going on there, right? But, you know, she did not, the community and her didn't go about this whole thing the right way, in my opinion. I could be, it was kind of just putting it on him. There was no sympathy, okay? There was no pity. There was no accepting responsibility. There was no apologizing. They were just like, eh, you know, we were cool. We had an open relationship. He was just a depressed person. You know, it's not my fault. And actually pity, actually it's pity, pity me, pity me. Oh, you know, like she wanted attention because of it. It was just kind of disgusting. But anyway, okay? So here recently, it came out. It's all over the news. I'm sure you heard about it, okay? Asi Argento, a few years ago, was in California, doing a show or a movie, whatever. And she had a co-star who she was acquainted with for many years since he was eight years old. At that time, he was 17. They apparently had sex and there was explicit photographs of them having sex in the bed. I could be the shortly after, maybe pressured by the parents, whatever. He put forth a lawsuit and accused her of sexually assaulting him because in the state of California, you have to be 18 to... You can't, you know? So anyway, I'm not here to argue about the age of consent. It was illegal, and it was not. It was something that if it was a man, he would have been crucified for doing, okay? And everybody in the Me Too movement and all these people, I saw a video of the Young Turks. It just, it revolts my stomach, this stuff when I see in the media. Downplayed, constantly downplayed because he's a male. Like, what guy wouldn't want Asi Argento to sleep with him? And that's not the point, okay? That's not the point. You don't think young girls fantasize about sleeping with older men? Guarda, I can tell you, it happens a lot. It happens all over the place. You hear about it all the time. It's about consent. It's about what's right. And it's about what it really comes down to, to me, is you look at this pattern of behavior with Asi Argento, and you, you point, and it's like, this is the person that is at the forefront of this Me Too movement and pointing fingers and saying guys are pigs and all this stuff, and we should always believe the victims. But they are, in fact, a predator. They are, in fact, the very thing that they accuse all these dudes of being. This is where the hypocrisy comes in, and this is what really bothers me about society today is we're so quick to point fingers, and we're always demonizing guys. Now, I'm not here to tell you that, you know, Guys aren't, you know, some guys are not uh, depravati, you know, these graziati, weird people. Of course. But this is a very small percentage of the population. And we're really, we're really, you know, putting a blanket term on everything. And we're not applying the same rules that we put to one sex to the other. And this goes really big into mainstream. Like on the news, 
people go and say, ah, but yeah, he was a male. You know, what guy wouldn't want that? What? And it's like, it's not about that. It's about decency. You know, recently, Justin Trudeau, the, you know, the head guy, I don't know what they call it in Canada, the prime minister, what if the president, whatever, the head of the government in Canada, who's been a really strong supporter of the Me Too movement and believe the victim, unquestionably, we must believe the victim, right? He goes on record or it comes up that he sexually harassed this girl, is accusing him of harassment. He has already dismissed members, other members of parliament, the Senate, whatever they got over there, based on simple accusations. Do you think he recluses himself? Do you think he steps down? No, no. He's, he's in a tough spot. You see this again and again in Hollywood. Many guys that stand up and be like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a male feminist. You know, this whole thing is horrible. Then you point around and be like, oh, he did it too. Everybody's fucked up. But she's not owning up to what she did, right? First, she denied it ever happened. Then she said it happened, but, you know, he came on to her. Then it's like, well, you know, okay, maybe I came on to him a little bit, but, you know, I didn't know he was underage. It's like, you didn't know he was underage. You knew him since you were eight. If it was a guy, they would be saying that she groomed him. I capito. It's really, it's, how, how? How can you know somebody from when they're a child? From when they're a child, and then you have sex with them. No, no, guarda. What do you guys think about this whole thing? What's next is the real big question, you know, and what can we do? What can we do to bring some clarity to these kind of situations? I mean, I don't mean to take away from the victims, but this thing where you just got to believe, believe the victim, believe, you got to believe them. I'm like, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. I think you should question everything. I think people are innocent until proven guilty because there's a lot more bad intentions out there than, than people want to admit. And it really bothers me. Like the percentage of false, uh, you know, claims and stuff like that. People think, oh, it's insignificant. I'm like, really? You think it's insignificant? I don't think it's insignificant. I don't think it's insignificant. I think it's huge. And you can't talk about one without the other. I'm not trying to take away from the merit of people being harassed. But, uh... Let's be honest, a lot of this shit, a lot of this shit is vindictive. I've been on the other side of this many times with vindictive people, and especially when you talk about the men that are in, you know, that have a certain amount of influence. It hits. People can be very vindictive. Very vindictive. Very vindictive. Ma scusa, ma veramente, if I can be honest here, can I say this without getting a lot of people get pissed off? I'm going to tell you something. And I'm going to just be frank with you from my experience. So I'm not saying this is a lot, but from my experience, I've noticed women tend to be much more vindictive than men. This also applies to me. I'm not a very vindictive person. If somebody wrongs me, you know, I might do something in the moment. If I can't, I move on. I move on. Okay. But there's this resentment. I think a lot of this vindictiveness comes from the sense of entitlement. Okay. And when you pop that bubble of entitlement that someone's always like patting themselves on the back, walking through life, like, you know, like not understanding the value and the merit of their work and their performance, then suddenly when a po- it causes violence and, and displeasure. You know, men deal with rejection, deal with this personal responsibility from when we're born. I got beat. We're never told, ah, you can cry. It's okay. No, we, we, we're held to a different stand that I feel. And most of the time, men are just not as vengeful. And I, from my experience, like the worst times in my life that someone has tried to, to hurt me professionally or, or physically, it's been a woman. Uh, you know, what's, what's that saying? None have it like a woman's scorn or some shit like that. What does it mean? It means you got to watch out because when a woman gets pissed off, She'll go the the distance. My grandmother. My grandmother had a quarrel with my mother. Or no, my, my grandmother had a quarrel with my grandmother. My great-grandmother with my grandmother. Anyway, you get it. It's two ladies in my family. They didn't talk to each other for five years. Five years. What was it over? I think it was over a washing machine. I kid you not. I don't know. I'm just saying. I am just saying. My mother's the same way. You know, like if my, if you do my mother wrong, she'll, she will talk, like she can, she can, she, it's not, it's, it's, I don't know. It's a way to recall that stuff. I don't know. I don't know. So women, it, it's selective memory. You know, it's easy to forget some things, but I'm telling you, you wrong a woman, she'll always bring it up. She'll always remember that thing 
You know, I've just I've never heard I've never heard of a, a guy getting pissed at a friend and stuff like that, and then just not talking to him for five years or a family member for five years. You just don't hear about that kind of stuff. But it's not it's not in popular culture. People don't really see that manipulation, that revenge kind of thing. The Count of Monte Cristo should have been the Countess of Monte Cristo. I'm just trying to I'm I'm just trying to reason with you. If there are any ladies out there watching this, I'm just trying to be frank. I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm just talking about my personal experience. So I'm not taking away from the Me Too movement and about all these accusations and stuff like that. I'm just saying, if it were dudes, you would never have this. You would not have this because dudes are taught from a young age that they're the ones responsible for their own actions. I've been jumped before. I've been jumped before. Friends and family, you know what they said to me? Why? Why you get jumped? You were in a bad neighborhood. What did you do to do it? You know, I had to pick myself up my feet and that's it. It's done. Never in my life have I had something happen to me and people would be like, poor you. You're just one big victim. No, no, it's not like that. And honestly, it's a positive thing because it makes you a man. There's nothing good going to come from self-pity. Nothing good going to come because this life is harsh. Nobody's going to be there to be like, oh, I'm sorry this happened to you. Here's a sandwich. Nobody's going to do that. Nobody's going to do that. You just got to keep trucking. And with guys, something happened. They, they wouldn't be. We wouldn't get together and be like, ah, oh, you know, let's destroy. Because that's what it comes down to. It comes down to destroying. It wasn't just this. Okay. It was we want to destroy this man. Somebody has to pay. He has to pay for how we feel. He has to pay for how we feel. That's how I feel a lot of this stuff is. A lot of this stuff is out of revenge. It's not out of danger. If it was danger, it would have came out when it happened. Right? That's more legit. Something happens. You go to the police. You feel a certain type of way. You do it in the moment. 20 years later, you and your friends say, oh, yeah, that guy's a douchebag, and you try to get back at it. What does that make sense? How does that make sense? How is that justice? I don't know. Maybe I'm going on a rant here. What do you guys think? Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, Vincent Brio thought here. Until next time, I don't even know. I got to come up with a better catchphrase. <laughs>